Welcome back to SDRTK. And the Rode PodMic has been a popular choice with creators since its launch two years ago. But with so many entrants in the $100 broadcast dynamic mic range, how does it hold up at the end of 2021? Let's do a detailed review of this mic and test it out against some of the popular competitors. Now all of the microphone tests and comparisons in this video will be done under the same conditions and connected directly to the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6. I will not apply any processing to the audio, however I will even out the volume of all microphones using Isotope RX8 Leveler. And in this video we'll go ahead and turn back the clock and unbox this microphone. Then we'll take a look at its features and specifications. After that, I'll conduct some tests, plosives, handling noise, all the physical tests you'd expect. Then we'll go ahead and compare it to a few of the other microphones in this category. And finally, I'll go ahead and give you a demonstration of what some processing can do with this microphone. So let's check it out. The Rode PodMic comes in some nice looking, what I would call consumer type packaging. It has a little bit of information, but mostly pictures of the mic itself. We'll go ahead and slit the ends on here so we can slide out the internal box the microphone comes in. And when we slide it out, we see that the internal box is considerably heavier, but still has uh, some nice design, shows you the microphone on it. So when we open it up, we find an additional cardboard sleeve that protects the microphone from the top side. So Rode really wants to make sure this gets to you in perfect condition. Inside you'll also find uh, some instructions, a little bit of desiccant, and uh, that's it for the uh, package. Then we look at the microphone itself. This is a very heavy microphone, a uh, very solid construction. You can just tell by holding it that this microphone is built to at least physically last for a long time. So uh, nice to see that in a microphone in this price category. The Rode PodMic is a dynamic microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern. It has a frequency response of 20 to 20,000 hertz with a sensitivity of negative 57 dB and an impedance of 320 ohms. This microphone weighs 937 grams and so it comes in as a very heavy microphone. My warm audio boom arm has no trouble handling the weight of this mic. And now you're listening to me on the Rode Pod mic. I have it connected directly into the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6. I have the gain set at 330. This is a dynamic microphone, so there's no phantom power required here, and there's no processing applied to this microphone. Now the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and test the handling noise rejection on this mic. And it's not a handheld mic, but nonetheless, if you have it on a boom arm, you may want to move it around. So let's see how much of that noise it rejects. And the pod mic definitely did pick up handling noise from what I can hear in my ears during this recording. Um, not the worst that I've heard, certainly, but you have to be aware of that if you plan to move it around. Now, you may be able to deal with that with some uh, noise reduction plugins uh, in your audio chain if, uh, if that's what you like to do. But understand those do color the sound a bit as well, so you have to use them sparingly. Now we'll go ahead and test this microphone for plosives. It is supposed to have an internal pop filter, but uh, let's see how it performs. People, people, because, because. And I mean, I really tried to get plosives going on there and I could hear them coming through, but certainly wasn't terrible. I've heard a lot worse than that. Let's uh, check it out with a pop filter now in front. People, people, because, because. And yeah, as expected, that completely cleaned it up. Now I have the microphone pointed at my mouth, but across axis so that I'm not speaking directly into it. And I think if you do that, you can probably get away without using a pop filter on this microphone. There are foam filters available and that that you can get for it, but the look of this microphone I know is a big deal as well. And so you probably don't want to cover it up with those things necessarily. So uh, pop filters, uh, I would say not necessary. And this does uh, a good job of rejecting plosives. Now we'll go ahead and we'll check out proximity and distance effect on this microphone. So let's start, I'll get up very close on the microphone to engage the proximity effect. Again, I'm trying to speak across it a little bit so as to avoid plosives, but this is about as much proximity effect as you'll get out of the Rode Pod mic. And now I'm back to about six inches away from the microphone and this is what the sound is like. Now I backed up to about a foot away from the microphone and this is how the Pod mic picks up the sound in what I would call a moderately treated space. Now I'm at about two feet away from the Rode Pod mic. I've turned it so that it's pointing a little more directly towards me, and this is the sound it picks up in the room. 
And now I'm at three feet away from the road pod mic. Again, it's pointed a little more directly towards me than I'd have it when I'm right up close. And this is kind of the audio it'll pick up in the background of the room. Now we'll go ahead and test the off-axis rejection and polar pattern of this microphone. So we'll start out with me speaking directly into it. Now I'll go ahead and rotate it. This is at 90 degrees to the microphone, and this is the pickup that you'll get. Continuing to rotate it around to the back. Now I'm speaking directly into the back of the microphone, and this is the sound you get. And around to the other 90 degree angle, and this is the sound that you get. And I would say that based on my monitoring, this microphone performed like I would expect a cardioid microphone to. It has a pickup in this sort of front range here. It's getting that with quite a bit of rejection from the back. So it does perform as a cardioid microphone should. And based on the test so far, I would say this microphone does tend to pick up a fair amount of the room and background noise. So I'll go ahead and type on my keyboard now. I'm typing just so you can hear how much of the microphone picks up while I am talking. And I could hear it in my monitoring. So again, I think this microphone does actually pick up quite a bit of the surrounding sound, which may be an issue for some of you, especially if you're streamers or gamers, anything where you have noise going on while you're trying to do your stream or recording. Now that we've tested out the performance of this microphone, let's see how it stacks up in 2021. We'll compare it to a few other microphones that are in the same category. And of course, we're starting out on the Rode Pod mic. I have it connected directly into the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6, gain set at 330, no processing applied. This is the sound you're going to get out of the box. Is this the sound for you? Let's go ahead and compare it to another microphone. And now you're listening to me on the Tascam TM70. This is a very recent microphone release. I have it connected directly up to the 8i6. I have the gain set at 230. This microphone's a lot hotter than the pod mic is. No processing applied. This is an inexpensive microphone, again, in that same price category as the pod mic. What do you think? How does it sound compared to the pod mic? And once again, back on the road, pod mic. Haven't made any changes. Still the 8i6, 330 for gain. No processing. Let's go ahead now and try this out against another broadcast dynamic microphone. And now you're listening to me on the Presonus PD70. This is another dynamic microphone in that sort of $100-ish price point. I have it connected directly to the Scarlett 8i6. Gain set at 315 for this microphone. No processing applied. This is how it sounds. Dynamic microphone from Presonus out of the box. And once again, back on the road, pod mic, still on the Focusrite 8i6, still gain at 330, still in the same space, haven't made any changes there. Let's go ahead and try out another broadcast dynamic microphone in that same $100 price point at the time of recording anyways. And now I'm on the Audio-Technica AT2040. Again, directly into the 8i6, gain at 330, no processing on this mic. This is a brand new release from Audio-Technica in 2021. Do you like it? Is this the sound you're looking for? Sounds a little different to the pod mic to my ears. Not saying one's better than the other, but this is the AT2040 out of the box. And yet again, back on the road, pod mic. Do you like the sound of the pod mic the best so far, or is there another microphone you prefer? Now we'll go ahead and we'll try out a brand new microphone from Shure, the MV7X. I think it's going to be a popular microphone, but let's see how it sounds against the pod mic. And I'm on the brand new Shure MV7X. This microphone is connected directly to my 8i6 with a gain set at 3 o'clock and no processing. This is similar to the MV7. Uh, they took away the USB, changed the impedance, and we think changed the performance on the XLR on this microphone. But today we're considering it versus the pod mic. It's a little more expensive. Do you think it's worth saving up for this microphone as opposed to going with a pod mic right away? Which one has the tone that you like? And yet again, back on the road, pod mic, Scarlett 8i6, gain at 330, no processing. Did you like the sound of the MV7X better? It is almost double the price of this microphone, so that's a consideration. Now we'll go ahead and try out a couple of handheld dynamic microphones. I realize the look of these microphones are important, but if all you're going for is audio, then you should keep those in mind as well. Now you're listening to me on the Behringer XM8500. This is a very inexpensive handheld dynamic microphone, about a quarter the price of the pod mic. I've got it connected directly into the Scarlett 8i6, gain set at 330, no processing. If you're not 100% interested in the look of a broadcast dynamic microphone, for 25 bucks, this could be the microphone for you.
And back again on the pod mic. Did you like the sound of that handheld dynamic microphone? I realize, again, the look of this microphone may be important to you, but if sound's only it, maybe a handheld is a choice for you. Let's try out one more dynamic microphone. And now we're on another handheld dynamic mic. This time it's the Sennheiser XS1. This microphone's about half the price of the pod mic, so considering it's half the price, does it sound half as good? It's connected directly to the 8i6, gain here set at 330, no processing, Sennheiser XS1, this is the sound you get. And yet again, back on the road, pod mic, nothing has changed, same interface, same gain, no processing. This is how it sounds out of the box. We'll try one more dynamic microphone, and then we'll try one condenser microphone. And now you're listening to me on the Shure SM7B. This microphone is four times the price of the pod mic. Does it sound four times better? I have it connected directly into the 8i6, gain here set at 430, no processing, no cloud lifter, don't want to give this microphone any advantage over the other dynamics in this comparison, and that's really what it comes down to. I know it sounds different, but is it four times better than the pod mic? And now we're back on the Rode pod mic again. And after listening to the SM7B, a microphone that is about four times the price of this microphone, did it sound four times better? It sounded different, but different doesn't always mean better. What do you think? Is this microphone for you? Or should you hang in and wait for the SM7B or something else? And I thought I'd throw in a large diaphragm condenser. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020, another very popular microphone, same kind of price point as the pod mic. Condenser microphones that get a little more open up in the top end usually, but they do pick up a little more room noise. Do you prefer a condenser? Do you prefer a dynamic? Want to give you this option so you could hear one against the other. Connected in here to the 8i6, gain set at noon, 48 volts phantom power, no processing, out of the box, the AT2020. And finally, once again, back on the road, pod mic, Scarlet 8i6, gain at 330, no processing. Now that you've had a chance to hear a very popular condenser microphone, what do you think is the difference? Dynamic mic, condenser mic, does it matter to you? Is it about the look? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. And because I know a lot of you like to apply some processing to your microphone to alter the tone and dynamics, I'll go ahead and do a demonstration using Isotopes Neutron 3. As usual, I'm not going to create any custom processing for this microphone. This is just to give you an idea of the range of possibilities of processing with the pod mic. If you're interested in how to process audio for voiceover, check out one of my videos where I go through the steps in setting up a vocal chain. Now let's fire up Neutron 3 and see what we get. And in today's processing demonstration, we're going to add in a tube modeling plugin as well. So we have the Analog Obsession Pre-Box, and this allows us to model a few different tube pre-amplifiers. We're just going to go ahead and use the SS9, and we'll see what the difference is. So, so far you're listening to unprocessed audio. Now I'll switch on the Pre-Box. And now you're listening to me through the Analog Obsession Pre-Box using the SS9 modeling mode. This is what the sound's like. Do you hear the additional saturation? Are you picking it up? Can you tell the difference? Don't expect anything drastic out of this type of situation. It's just supposed to give you a slight change in the coloration. Now I'll turn it off again. We're back on unprocessed audio. You see if you can tell the difference. Now we'll go ahead and turn on Neutron 3. So now we're on Neutron 3 using the podcast mode. This is what podcast sounds like. This is not made for the Rode pod mic at all, but it's just to give you an idea of what this type of processing curve will do a gentle boost in the lower end, a slight drop in the mid-range, and a minor little dip for de-essing, but overall presence boost towards the end. Now we'll go ahead and go on to another preset. This is low mid warmth, and this is kind of the classic Poltec boost and dip. Gives us a little bit of different sound. Uh, doesn't have uh, really much of anything in terms of presence. One little boost up in the high end. This is what it sounds like. And now I'm on the big broadcast preset. And this one, of course, is designed to give you a lot of bottom end in your voice. Again, taking out a little boxiness in the middle. Not specifically designed for this microphone, but I wanted you to have an idea again of the range of what processing can do to the coloration and dynamics of this mic. And now, of course, I'm back on the pod mic without any processing. Again, through the 8i6, gain set at 330. And hopefully the processing gave you an idea of what you can do with this microphone. Keep in mind, processing is not really meant to make your microphone sound different. It's just meant to supplement and improve the tone and dynamics the microphone has. So you can't really make something out of nothing. So 
For example, if you're looking for a really deep bass bottom end, this is probably not the microphone for you. But the clarity, I think, is very good, especially if you have any music in the background, any other kinds of distracting things, game audio. This could be really a good choice for you. And getting back to the question of does the pod mic hold up in 2021 after it being out for a couple of years with so many other microphones in this price category now, I would have to say that I think the build quality, tone and clarity of this microphone absolutely still are a good choice in 2021. Certainly you have more options now if you're looking for a microphone that has a little bit of different tone. If this isn't exactly the sound you're looking for, you do have a lot of great choices. And again, hopefully the comparisons in this video helped you out. But overall, I would say the pod mic is still a choice. You need to pick a microphone that sounds the way you want it to sound. Of course, appearance is something as well, but there's so many choices, a lot of great looks. If that's important to you, you may consider that when you're picking out your next microphone. And if you're still searching for the right microphone to give you the sound and performance you're looking for, check out this video or one of my other microphone reviews or comparisons. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.